Hey there deluxe fans, hope you're feeling particularly magical today. In today's video, we are going to be discussing how Mei Li could actually be 22 from Pixar's other movie, Soul. Before the movie came out, many fans were skeptical about this even being a possibility, especially since Turning Red took place in Canada and was about a giant red panda rather than our New York setting scene in Soul's movie. However, after Turning Red's most recent release and taking a look at the finer details of both movies, it might not be such a far-fetched theory after all. At the end of Pixar's Soul, we learned, along with Joe in 22, that someone's spark isn't necessarily their purpose in life. As a matter of fact, the last piece that 22 needed to complete the Earth Badge was simply a want to live. 22 wasn't going to get to experience life until they wholeheartedly wanted to. And as we saw in the film, 22 was able to come to that conclusion themselves. Despite this though, 22 was still reluctant to make the jump. So Joe offered to go along with them, and as we saw, they made the jump out of the great before together even though they both knew that Joe was not able to go back to Earth at this point in the movie. Regardless, once Joe let go of 22's hand, we actually got a clue as to where 22 ended up on Earth. If you look closely at where 22 was heading as they fell toward Earth, you'll notice that they were making their way towards the country of China. What's particularly interesting about Pixar's choice to have 22 head towards China is that it's the same part of the world that Mei Li's family descended from. During the events of Turning Red, we saw that Mei and her parents lived in Canada. However, they never directly mentioned that she was born there. And though it might be a stretch, there is always a small possibility that she was born in China before moving over to Canada. As a matter of fact, this idea is supported by the director and creator of Turning Red, Domi Shi. While Domi Shi didn't say that Mei and her family were actually from China, she did say that she created Turning Red to be based on what her life was like growing up in her family. And if you look into Domi Shi's life, you will find out that she was born in Chongqing before she and her family moved to Canada where she grew up. So if Turning Red is loosely based on her life, there will always be the possibility that Mei was born in China as well, prior to moving to Canada. And if that's the case, then there is a chance that 22 ended up becoming Mei when she took on a life on Earth. This would certainly explain all the other connections and similarities that can be made between Mei and 22. Not only is Mei's nationality related to where we saw 22 heading the last time we saw them, but there is also a huge connection between where 22 landed and the red panda that Mei and her family are so strongly connected to. As 22 found themselves falling towards the Earth to start their life, many fans noticed something about the particular portion of the world that 22 was heading towards, which as we said was the country of China. But here's the thing, China is an extremely large country, meaning that there are several places that 22 could have ended up. And yes, for this theory, these location details do matter. And thanks to some fans who have a keen eye for detail, it looks like we know exactly where they could have landed, despite the movie Soul giving us little to no evidence of 22's fate after the great before. It would appear that 22 was heading directly towards Qinghai, a province in northwest China. What's interesting about this particular location is it's one of the few places in China that sells New York style pizza. And like most people who have tasted a true New York slice, that's one of 22's favorite foods. But how does that connect with Turning Red? Well, we all know at least part of the reason why 22 would be drawn to Qinghai, China. But do you know what else is native to Qinghai? Qinghai is one of the native homes of the Red Panda and it's actually one of the few places where they can still be found in the wild. While red pandas did used to live all across Eurasia at one point in time, they now mainly reside in the southern parts of the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And I know it might seem like a small stretch, but you have to admit it's pretty solid connection between Seoul and turning red. I mean, we know that Mei and her family were granted their power to transform into a red panda after Son Yi prayed for the ability to protect her family. And though turning red doesn't take place in Qinghai, Mei and her family do have a distinct connection to the red panda. It's likely that her ancestral line originated around the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, which is where Sun Yi would have learned to worship the Red Panda. And with her genetics likely stemming from that portion of the world, perhaps that's her connection with 22. As we mentioned before, Turning Red was loosely based off the life of Domi Shi, so it isn't a stretch to assume that Mei, like Shi, was born in China and moved to Canada. In this case though, Mei was likely born around Qinghai before moving to Toronto, Canada. Now if an ancestral connection wasn't enough to convince you that 22 might have begun their life as Mei Lin Li. This might help. After watching both films, fans couldn't help but see how similar Mei's personality was to 22's. They're insanely similar in almost every single way. Let's take a look at 22. When we were first introduced to 22, they were depicted as a soul who appeared to have either given up or simply stopped caring about earning their Earth Pass. While all of the other souls were working their hardest to find their spark and be allowed to enter the world of the living, 22 was having no such luck and figured that being a soul in the great before was better than life on Earth. This was our first observation of stubbornness. In fact, 
22 was so stubborn about who they were in the great before that they intentionally pushed their mentors away. And 22 had some pretty patient mentors. But 22 made a point to try to break them and mark themselves as unteachable. They even chose to speak in the voice of a middle-aged white lady because they thought it would be the best way to annoy people and keep them from reaching out and wanting to talk to them. But of course, that was only until they met Joe Gardner, who eventually helped 22 see what they were missing on Earth, and that experiencing life was an important part of their journey. After spending some time with Joe, their true personality began to shine through, and we got to catch a glimpse of the type of being 22 really was, which was just an independent soul afraid of the unknown. In their heart of hearts, 22 was a snarky soul, who had a very cynical view of life and what it had to offer. Until they met Joe, of course, and actually experienced a little bit of life. They were interested in only the things they found interesting and didn't pretend to act like any of the other souls around them. 22 was a free thinker that didn't care what anyone else thought about them, as long as they were remaining true to themselves. This is very similar to how Mei was portrayed in Turning Red. Mei Lin Lee was depicted as being a very independent teenager who did her best to stay true to herself. She was full of passion and that showed through everything that she loved. We saw that Mei loved school and enjoyed learning very much, something that can't be said about most people her age. Math was shown as one of her favorite subjects, which is another thing that she didn't share with any of her friends. But she didn't try to hide it away per se. She took pride in how well she was doing at school and how she enjoyed learning and studying. Again, similar to 22, when she had an identity built, she owned it unapologetically. Mei was also shown to be someone who cared about the issues that were going on around the world. For instance, there was one scene with her friends where they were holding the picket signs during protests. Some of the signs spoke about causes including the declining whale population, as well as the effect that littering and pollution were having on the environment. Mei was a person who cared deeply about the things she liked and loved to express herself. And when you take 22 and Mei and put them side by side, it's like looking at a visually inaccurate mirror. They might not look the same, with 22 still being a soul and Mei being a Chinese-Canadian teenager. But their personalities line up perfectly. Both are very confident and independent of themselves, not like the rest. Mei lives her life to the fullest, as stated in her introduction to the audience when she let us know that she makes her own moves 24-7, 365. She wears what she wants, says what she wants, and will not hesitate to do a spontaneous spontaneous cartwheel should she feel so moved. And if you ask me, that's living the life that 22 seemed to want to live. 22 always wanted to be able to do their own thing without having to explain themselves. And if you aren't convinced by now, take a look at the hobbies 22 and May shared as well. We saw that 22 loved to dance, when they mentioned wanting to live somewhere where they can settle their disputes with dance, and was even shown to enjoy music. Well, we know that May loves both music and dancing, simply by how loud she and her friends got whenever the words for town were brought up. And I'm sorry, you can't like boy bands without enjoying choreographed dance moves performed alongside harmonized ballads. It's clear that both of them hate similar things as well, which would include confrontation for starters. I mean, no one likes getting yelled at. At least most people don't. But both May and 22 particularly hate getting yelled at by someone they admire or look up to. In May's case, it's her mother. And for 22, it was when Joe yelled at them. It was heartbreaking for both of them, and they clearly didn't take it well. They both also fear and hate failing too, no matter what it is. May and 22 believe that failure was not an acceptable option. In fact, it was a big part of the fear 22 had about going to Earth. They liked and felt comfortable with what they knew in their little hideout in the great before. They couldn't fail there, whereas Earth was full of possibilities of failure. Both May and 22 loved to express themselves despite who was watching and who might be judging them. It didn't matter whether they annoyed people or not. By the end of both of their films, no one was going to stop them from being who they wanted to be. Maybe that's one of the big reasons that May decided to keep her red panda. Like 22, her independence allowed her to fully embrace and accept who she really was, regardless of what other people thought. Even though both of these movies are very different when it comes down to their plot and overall theme seen in the films, it's small clues like these that could help explain who 22 ended up becoming. And in this case, it looks like she might have become Mei Lin Lee. But what do you guys think? Did 22 end up becoming Mei? Or are their similar traits simply a coincidence? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. As for now, that's all Disney fans. Let us know what video you'd like to see next in the comments, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.